We're in New Rochelle this morning. Uh, New Rochelle has the highest cluster of coronavirus cases in the country, the highest density of cases. Uh, we made New Rochelle what we call a containment zone, which means we closed the schools, we closed the large gatherings, uh, and we brought in the National Guard to help the community. The National Guard has been helping clean, they've been distributing meals, and they've really done an outstanding job, and I want to thank them very much. They're here today. Thank you for the beautiful job. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, as you know, our strategy in this state, uh, what communities all across the country are trying to do is slow the spread of the virus. There are two ways to do that. Uh, first, reduce density, reduce the concentration of people, so you reduce literally the likelihood of uh, communicating the disease. We announced yesterday we're reducing large gatherings. That's all density reduction. The second leg of the strategy is testing, 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 testing. You want to find the positive cases because you want to be able to isolate those positive cases and then find out who that person may have been in touch with so you can get them the assistance they need. Uh, this is a uh, very creative uh, way of testing. This is drive-through testing, something I didn't hear of last week, but something that we're doing this week, uh, thanks to the good efforts of the team we have here. Drive-through testing means people in this community can call a telephone number, make an appointment, and they can come to be tested and literally drive through the testing facilities. There are six lanes that are operating. You drive in in your car uh, and the medical staff comes to you, does the test, takes the swabs, uh, and then you pull out. The, the swabs get sent to a laboratory, in this case, uh, bioreference, they do the testing, we get the results back to the person. Uh, this facility can do about 200 cars per day, so depending on how many people are in the car is how many people you will actually serve. It's not only faster and easier, it's also smarter and safer because you're not exposing people to a person who may be positive. Up until now, if somebody thinks they're positive, they might walk into a hospital. They walk into a hospital, they're now exposing people in the emergency room, they're exposing staff, etc. So it's actually safer to keep them in their car so they can come in for the testing. It's less exposure overall. We have a phone number. You can't just come. You have to call first, make an appointment, uh, and then come. Each car is here for about 15 minutes. The phone number is 888-364-3065. We are prioritizing people in New Rochelle first because, again, that's where we want to reduce that density and reduce those cases. Uh, but people from all throughout Westchester can be served at this facility. We are also prioritizing vulnerable populations. And this is what we have to keep in mind. Uh, many people will uh, be exposed to this virus. Many people have already been exposed to this virus, didn't know it, and have what they call self-resolved, where they had the virus, they thought they had the flu, they're now better, they may have had mild symptoms, so many people ha have already been exposed to the virus, and 80% of the people will self-resolve. Our priority, because our concern is the quote-unquote vulnerable population, and we have to keep that in mind. Senior citizens, uh, people with compromised immune systems, and people with underlying illnesses, especially respiratory illnesses. This is basically pneumonia. And if you have an underlying respiratory illness, then the situation is more problematic. For 80% of the people, you'll self-resolve, God bless. We're focusing on the vulnerable populations, uh, and we need to keep that in mind. This 
facility is new and different. I understand that. Uh, but our job is to find ways to respond to the situation. And this is a new situation. So by definition, you're going to see new and different responses to it. Uh, and that's what you're seeing here. I spoke to Vice President Pence uh, again yesterday, and I want to thank the Vice President, who's been very accessible and very cooperative. On the issue of testing, I said to the Vice President, uh, and I've said publicly, I think the federal government should decentralize testing. What does that mean? Rather than trying to control it all through Washington, through CDC, and through the FDA, uh, the volume is just too high. States regularly regulate labs. We have 200 private labs in the state of New York. Those laboratories are doing HIV testing, Zika testing. They're doing all sorts of testing for us. Our State Department of Health routinely regulates those 200 labs. Let the federal government decentralize the authority to the state governments and say to the state governments, God bless you, you can go authorize testing, you can authorize what's called automated testing, which takes a lab capacity from like 30 tests a day to like 1,000 tests per day. But we do have a crisis in testing. We're not up to scale. Uh, you need to change that quickly and let the federal government turn that function over to the states. The states do it anyway. Uh, that's our bread and butter. You could open up 500, 1,000 laboratories overnight if you just turn that responsibility back to the state. Uh, I hope the federal government takes this recommendation seriously. I know that in New York, we have dozens of laboratories that could start testing tomorrow and could increase their capacity dramatically if we left it up to the state regulatory bodies. I also, in closing, I want to say a special thank you to the healthcare professionals who are here. These nurses, these doctors, uh, they get into this line of work because they have a calling and they have a passion to help other people, as simple but as profound as that is. And there's no finer demonstration of that than what you're seeing today. People who come here to help other people, put themselves in a precarious p position just to help other people. Uh, it says something about who they are, it says something about their character, uh, and it says something about their heart and their soul that is just truly uh, beautiful, which I respect and I admire and I am very grateful for. So I thank each and every one of them, not just here at this facility, but all across the state, who are in emergency rooms today and laboratories today, uh, who are really stepping up to help their brothers and sisters. It's, a, it's humanity at its best. You know, at times of crisis, we tend to see what people are really made of. And you see the good and you see the bad. But today, the people who are working here are showing us the best. Uh, and I, I truly respect them, and I thank them all. To bioreference uh, and uh, Mr. Cohen, we'll have a capacity starting next week to do 5,000 tests per day with bioreference. That is a huge uh, step forward, and I want to thank them very much. Uh, and Northwell and Michael Dowling, who I've had the pleasure of working for, with for many years. Michael Dowling used to work for a person who I consider the greatest governor in the history of the state of New York, a gentleman by the name of Governor Mario Cuomo, who had Michael as his health commissioner and head of health for the entire state. And my father was a great judge of character and a great judge of talent, as evidenced by Michael Dowling. I give you Michael Dowling. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Governor, for, uh, for being here. And uh, thank you also for your extraordinary leadership uh, during this, uh, this time and this crisis. 
um, you, uh, in your daily uh, briefings and press conferences and your actions demonstrate leadership at its best. Um, you've been practical, focused, humane, entrepreneurial, um, also trying to calm down the public because anxiety and fear is also one of the issues that we have to deal with on a continuing basis and that's I think a responsibility of everybody including the media that we have to deal with the issue but we also have to deal with the issue of anxiety uh, the virus itself plus the anxiety that surrounds it and this is a unique facility and again this shows that the entrepreneurship that we have here in New York of being able to do something that I don't think is currently exists any place around at the moment. But a facility like this is unique and the vision of the government to create this is pretty extraordinary. And uh, as CEO of Northwell, I am delighted to be a partner with the governor on this. And at this time, it's important for all of us to be partnering together, the public, the private labs like uh, John Cohn's facilities, and all of the other entities out there around the region working together. This is a time for unity, not division. This is a time for us to think of community, community at large. And I am a very strong believer, as the governor has indicated many times in the past, that uh, we are going through, through a lot of inconvenience, but this is an issue that will be beaten. We will win this. It may take some time, but we need a dose of optimism along with practicality as we deal with these issues. And I again also want to reiterate what the governor just mentioned, and that is the staff that are involved in this, including the staff that are here, but also the staff that are in all the facilities across the state. We have a wonderful health healthcare system in New York State, uh, and at the staff are on the front lines each and every day, also having some anxiety as well, but coming to work, doing the thing that they need to be doing, and taking care of the public. And it's amazing that at a time like this, uh, where healthcare is on the front lines across the board, and uh, the public should, and uh, politicians who sometimes criticize healthcare should realize that at a time like this, is, this is when healthcare is needed the most. At Northwell, we have a phrase that we use, which was a phrase that was developed by the staff, which basically said, we're made for this. And so we are made for this. The state is made for this. We will deal with this issue practically. We will win. And with the leadership of Governor Cuomo, um, I have no doubt that we will be in the front lines of innovation, creativity, and eventually succeed. So, Governor, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Michael Dowling. New York is made for this. New York is a place of challenges. We meet them and we overcome and Michael's exactly right, we're going, we're going to do that again uh, here.